So uh, we'll get started officially here in, in a few minutes. Um, give people a chance to just keep coming in. So just just to take an informal poll, um, how many of you have never actually used a Drupal site before? Wow. The last one of these I did, it was only about a quarter of the people who never even see, used it before. Okay. I'm sorry, I didn't hear the initial question. How many of you have never used a Drupal site at all before? Um, how many of you have never actually even like heard of Drupal until recently? Okay. Well, let's go ahead and get started. This is, as you can see, a not too comprehensive introduction to Drupal. And uh, we're gonna obviously talk about what Drupal is. Um, so, who am I? My name is Adam Gregory. How you guys doing? I am a Drupal developer, themer, consultant, and trainer. I've been using Drupal um, pretty much exclusively for web development for the past five years and been doing web development in general for about the past 10 years. Um, I build and maintain numerous modules and themes on Drupal.org. Currently it's somewhere between a, a dozen and, and 15 um, that I'm actually responsible for maintaining on the Drupal.org site and then also uh, built countless uh, other modules for other sites. And I've been involved in Drupal projects, large and small, everything from uh, projects with AT&T, uh, Major League Soccer, when they recently relaunched all their stuff on Drupal, and on down to, you know, mom and pop small businesses locally in the community. So I've, I've worked with all levels, and, uh, you know, it's really helped me have a really broad understanding of, of Drupal. Um, Currently, I work with full time with an organization called Coscast uh, that develops uh, almost exclusively on the Drupal platform for our clients. And then I also am starting a Drupal shop with my business partner. Um, and we're currently uh, getting started up and, and doing what we can to contribute back to the Drupal community. So, what we will cover here's the meat and bones of what we're going to talk about. Obviously, what is Drupal, uh, what it does, who uses it, and even some of what it isn't, because Drupal is a lot of things, and it can do a lot, but there are some things that it is not. Uh, we'll talk about the benefits of Drupal, we'll talk about how it works, uh, the different components, we'll, we'll get into a little bit of the technical details, um, and then we'll actually, hopefully, be able to set up a site in five minutes, live, right here in our session. And then we'll have a, a, a quick Q&A uh, at the end, and I'll try to answer any and all questions that you guys have for me. So let's get started. So what is Drupal? That is, you know, the, the main question a lot of people ask. It's got a funny name, but what is it? Drupal is a content management system, uh, and what that means is that it is software that helps you manage your site without having to know how to code. Uh, what it is, is highly scalable. Like I already mentioned, it's used on sites large and small. Everything from, you know, Fortune 500 companies all the way down to small businesses in, in your local area. It is incredibly customizable. Um, almost everything in it can be tweaked so you get the output and the, the, the desired look and the desired functionality that you want. Uh, it's incredibly modular, and basically what that means is that if there's functionality you want, there's probably a module or a, a term that might make more sense, a plugin, that you can drop into your site that will give you that functionality. Uh, it's highly supported. Basically, you know, there's thousands and thousands of people who develop on Drupal and contribute back to the community, and there's even larger numbers who develop with Drupal you know, and don't actually get a chance to, to give back to the community. But on the Drupal.org site alone, there's hundreds of thousands of users. Probably about five to 10,000 of those are actively involved in contributing code back to the Drupal community. Uh, it is highly used. 
Currently, Drupal.org reports about 300,000 sites using the Drupal platform. That number is conservatively low because a lot of sites uh, that are on the older platform of Drupal don't actually report back to Drupal.org. A lot of people don't turn on the reporting feature to tell Drupal.org that they're using it. So it's, it's much, much higher than 300,000. Um, and it's also community driven. Uh, that's one of the things that makes it such a great project is, as you can see here, today at Drupal Camp LA, it really is a community of people. There's a, a lot of people that are involved in it, and we get together, we talk about it, we love the software, we love the community, and, you know, it, it's just a great, uh, it's a great platform, but what really makes it great is the community. Uh, you know, it's, our new slogan is, come for the software, stay for the community, and, and that really is what makes Drupal so appealing. So who uses Drupal? Uh, well, it starts with some uh, large organizations, the United States government, and uh, you know it goes through the, the White House uses it, Department of Energy, Department of Defense, Department of Transportation, Treasury, all, all the uh, executive branches use it. There's a lot of other foreign governments that use it, a lot of state governments use it. A lot of Fortune 500 companies use it. Sony, AT&T, FedEx, a lot of educational uh, institutions use it. A lot of media and publishing, a lot of sports. I mean, there's just uh, a lot of companies that use it and trust it to run their stuff. And if, you know, a Fortune 500 company is out there and they say, this system's good enough to, you know, run our million dollar web enterprise, you know, it, it can be used in the... the you know, local small businesses or for your own company. What Drupal isn't? Drupal is not a quick and easy blogging platform. You know, if you came today because you thought Drupal will, uh, you know, set you up a simple blog for you to, you know, talk about your kittens, that's cool. You can do that with Drupal, but you're probably better off using WordPress. It's quicker, it's easier for stuff like that. Drupal is not always easy to figure out. There is a learning curve with Drupal. Um, and it can be hard to, to do things sometimes. You know, some of the code, if you don't know code, can get confusing. Some of the, the, the community, you know, terms we use and the, the way we talk about things can, you know, just go over your head initially. But if you stick with it, the community is helpful, people are responsive and they'll help you get through that learning curve. Um, it can sometimes be hard to find quality, you know, themes. You know, once again, with WordPress, you can go someplace like Theme Forest and, you know, see thousands of custom themes for it. With Drupal, it's a little bit harder, but Drupal also provides much more flexibility in what you're able to do on the front end of your site. And it can be hard to code for. Um, just curious, how many of you here that or how many of you here are actually developers looking to learn about Drupal? So some of you, okay. So Drupal can be hard to code for, if especially if you're coming from a you know non-PHP language. Um, if you're coming from PHP, even it can be hard to learn because it's got its entire own API. Sometimes that you know where you might normally do something in PHP, Drupal's already got stuff that handles that. So it can be a little hard to to get over that learning curve. But despite all that, it's not an unproven platform. It is an incredibly robust platform. It's incredibly stable. And it's, like I said, supported by thousands of people and, and a lot of organizations. So what are the benefits of Drupal? That's the you know, million dollar question is, what's it gonna do for you? Well, one of the biggest benefits, obviously, is that it's free and it's open source. Uh, that saves money. You know, if you're working in a business and you're having to pay for a <coughs> proprietary platform from some company, uh, the benefits of a free and open source platform are immediately obvious. Uh, it's written to be tweaked and overwritten. And basically what that means is that it's developed from the ground up with the end user in mind that we want people to be able to have their site look the way they want and work the way they want without having to hack and mess with the core code. 
So everything's written in a way that is easily customized and easily, or not so easily sometimes, um, overwritten so that you get the end result you want. And it's supported by thousands of developers. Um, if, if you've ever came from a proprietary software platform, uh, whether it's a de desktop application, a server application, or a, a web application, you know that sometimes, you know, that company's three guys in a garage, and they don't have the necessary skills and expertise to support maybe what you were doing with that software. With Drupal, uh, you know, if you're hiring my company, and we're doing Drupal work for you, and then tomorrow we're out of business, you're not out of luck. There's still thousands of other companies and thousands of other developers that can help you and support you and, and work with your software. So that's one of the big benefits of it being open source is that you have a lot of options and you have a lot of people who can help you. Uh, Drupal is highly commercially supported. Um, you know, one of the problems with a lot of open source software is they don't have backing from an actual corporation. Um, Drupal was that way for a while, but over the past couple of years we've had a lot of companies that have uh, developed into to large businesses that support Drupal. Starting with Acquia, which is really the, uh, the business end of Drupal. It's ran and founded by Drupal's project lead, Dries Bouillatart, and they do pretty much all of the government work that the US government does runs through Acquia, and, along with a lot of other business. Uh, you know, some other companies, Lullabot, Palantir, uh, you heard about Four Kitchens. Uh, they do a lot of high-end Drupal commercial support. And then companies like mine and hundreds of other developers and, and freelancers out there are, are all there to commercially support you. And then, like I mentioned, you know, with WordPress, it's easy to go find, like, you know, Theme Forest or some of these other template sites, and you can download stuff. You know, and while Drupal does, may not have a, a template site where you can just go download stuff, there are hundreds and, and um, businesses that, that do Drupal theming and, and can turn your design or create a design for you and turn it into a Drupal theme. And there actually are a few sites there, uh, adaptive themes and top-notch themes, where they, they do that sort of uh, downloadable theme, you know, where it's 20, 30 bucks to download a theme. Um, they just don't have the thousands that you would find with something like WordPress. All right, so now we're going to talk about a little bit of the nuts and bolts of how Drupal works. And uh, we'll talk about a little bit of the technical details. So in a Drupal site, there are six main parts. Uh, the first part there is users. Obviously, you know, you're going to need a user account to log into your Drupal site. And, you know, depending on what you're doing, you may have clients who have user accounts or you're going to have end users who sign up on your site to buy products or to network with other people. So that's a, a key, key component of Drupal is the user system. And it is a very powerful system. It's getting more powerful in each version. In Drupal 7, uh, you know, the, the users now, you have the ability to sort of create more custom profiles for each user and, and be able to really go in and manage your users better. Nodes in Drupal are really what runs your Drupal site. A node is any piece of content that you create, uh, whether it's a page, a blog post, um, you might create a product for your shopping cart, you might create an image for a slideshow, you might have a file uh, that you attach to something. So nodes are really the, the core of your Drupal site. They are the actual content uh, that your users and people that visit your site are going to be looking at. So uh, everything really that you're going to be doing and inputting is going to be done through nodes. Blocks are similar to nodes in that they can be user-created content, um, but a lot of times there are things uh, that we would commonly maybe call a widget, uh, where it's got a list of the most recent blog posts or the most recent comments, or maybe a little login block or a search block. 
um, that they generally go into sidebars and footers and headers on your website. Menus, obviously, is you know that's how people actually navigate through your site, uh, but it's actually a, 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 its own component in Drupal, so that you know you can add your nodes into a menu, you can add different uh, things that you create into a menu, and then choose where you want that menu to display and how you want it to display, and so on and so forth. Modules are really what drives the Drupal system. Um, they provide feature sets to your Drupal site. So there is a users module that provides the feature of being able to have users. There is a node module that provides the feature set of being able to create nodes. There's a menu module. And then there's, I think right now, about 50,000 maybe more uh, modules and themes that are available on Drupal.org. So they provide wide-ranging functionality from something like the ability to add statistical analysis to your site for viewer or visitors, something like Google Analytics, to uh, the ability to ha add a slideshow on your site, uh, something people commonly want to be able to do is add a slideshow. Um, so it's, it's really a wide range of different features to really, really developer heavy features, you know, the, where, where it just provides APIs for developers to be able to do really cool things that make your site awesome. And then themes are the front end, the, the visual end of your site. And every Drupal site is going to have a theme, otherwise it's just going to be text on a screen and nobody wants to look at that. They want to see pretty colors and pictures. So. Your theme is going to be the front end and the skin of your site. So we'll talk for a moment about the technical details of what Drupal is and some of the things that go into it. So the requirements that you're going to have for Drupal is you're going to need a server. Um, some of you may be technical enough that you're going to actually run and manage your own computer server, um, you know, somewhere. Some of you are probably just going to go and sign up for a GoDaddy.com hosting account. But you're going to need a server of some sort uh, to host the actual code and the database. So like I said, that may be as simple as you just go on to GoDaddy and you sign up for a domain name, and you sign up for the $4 a month hosting, and you can get going on Drupal with that. Um, one of the things that uh, you want to make sure, though, is that whatever you sign up for ha meets the requirements for Drupal, because it can be a real pain if you go and you sign up for web hosting and you signed up for Microsoft hosting and it doesn't work with Drupal. So um, the recommended server software is Apache. That's something that uh, generally runs on a Linux operating system if you sign up for hosting. Um, a lot of times you'll see the option for Linux web hosting or Microsoft web hosting. With Drupal, you generally want to choose the Linux. I know it sounds like it's geeky and it might be scary, but you're never actually going to be like in there doing anything scary in the Linux. You're going to use their little interface to, to upload your files, and you never have to actually touch that end. So don't be afraid, because it asks if you want to use Linux or Windows, and you think, well, I only know Windows. It's OK. You can use the Linux, and that's actually preferred for Drupal. Uh, a database, uh, that's the other thing. If you know you're out signing up for web hosting, you want to make sure that you sign up for a hosting account that has a database. If you're, you're you know, up there enough where you're managing your own server, you want to generally uh, use MySQL. Uh, in Drupal 7, you can actually use, there's a couple different databases you can use. Uh, MySQL, Postgre, SQLite, and... Um, we can now use Microsoft SQL also. There, there's a distribution to, to use the Microsoft database server. But it generally runs best on MySQL, and that's probably the most common one that you're going to use. PHP. PHP is the language that Drupal is written in. Um, you don't really need to know PHP to use Drupal. But as you use Drupal, you may find that you want to learn some PHP because there's a lot of nifty little things that you can do with it to, to really improve your Drupal skills and your Drupal knowledge. So uh, if you don't know PHP, definitely write that down and, and um, don't be too scared. It's basically 
like doing word math. You know, if this is true, then do that. If it's not, do this. So that's really all PHP programming is. So don't be too scared if you're not a computer programmer. You don't need to know it. Like I said, as you get into Drupal and you find you like it, you may want to learn a little bit of it. But uh, once again, when you're signing up, if you're signing up for a hosting account, just make sure it's PHP 5.2 for Drupal. That's the version number for uh, Drupal 7. It needs 5.2. If you're going to use Drupal 6, it'll run with an older PHP, but generally you want 5.2. That's one of the, the newer releases. And the last requirement is patience and a willingness to learn. Uh, as I've already mentioned, Drupal can have a steep learning curve, but it's also one of the most powerful systems out there. So don't get frustrated, don't give up just because uh, you know you feel like you can't get something done or you're struggling. There are options out there in the Drupal community, whether it's the Drupal website or Twitter or an IRC channel or a mailing list. There's a lot of options out there to get the help that you need and people are highly responsive. Um, you know, when I first got into Drupal years ago, you know, five years ago, the community wasn't even as big as it is now, but it was still, it was responsive. You know, if I posted something on a forum because I had a question, I generally got a response within a few minutes sometimes, but generally no more than an hour as long as my question made sense. You know, if, if you're out there and you're finding nobody's responding to your question, it may be because you need to, to sort of rethink the way you're asking the question so that other people can really understand best how to help you. Because that's generally the questions that don't get help are the ones where people look at it and go, I'm not really sure what they're asking. So, uh, you know, the, most of the questions get answered and you will get the help you need. Just have the patience and, and keep the open mind and the willingness to learn. All right, so we're going to try this in five minutes. Last time I did this presentation, it didn't work. So let's see if it'll work this time. Um, so I'm assuming for this presentation that we already have a website hosting account and such set up. Um, I set one up on my own computer with a sort of little fake web address, but I'm assuming that you already have an actual uh, website address and a, a computer somewhere where you can actually you know access a Drupal site so for me I set it up locally on my computer at a little at a fake web address and you can see right now I do not have Drupal installed so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to run I'm going to go download the latest version of Drupal And where do you get that? The Drupal homepage. So we're going to download Drupal 7.7. 7. All right, so that downloaded. So we're going to take that, and what you get when you download Drupal is you get a, a zipped file um, and you actually have the choice you can see you can download a zip or this tar gz if you don't know what a tar gz is just download the zip and let's see where it downloaded yeah there it is all right so i'm going to basically open that and it's going to extract it out and now i have this drupal 7.7 .7 folder I can almost guarantee what's going to happen is that it's, you need to make sure that when you copy this, um, there is a hidden file in there. So if you are on Mac or Linux, you're not going to see it. If you're on Windows, I, I believe you will, but it's called a .ht access. So what's going to happen when you go to copy this, if you're on Mac or Linux, is it's not actually going to grab that file. So I believe... So you just need to make sure that you actually get all of the. Uh, so where is this file? You'll see it in a moment. I actually just turned mine on to show it. So. 
So you'll see down here this .hd access file. That's a very important file to Drupal. So just make sure that when you're copying these files or uploading them to your, your server that you get that file with it. Okay, like I said, if you're on a Mac or Linux, um, anything that, any file name that starts with a dot file or folder, it actually hides it from the, the GUI, the actual inter the user interface. So you need to make sure that you either turn on the hidden files or you're using something that shows it so that you actually copy it correctly. Yeah, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm assuming A, if you're running your own server, you obviously have the knowledge to do that, or B, that you've signed up for a web hosting account and they pretty much will have that set up out of the box for you. So I'm going to copy these. Yeah, and if you have any questions at any point, just ask. All right, so right here, this is the folder that my website is running off of. And this little file right here is showing that gigantic dump of PHP stuff. So now I'm going to copy all my Drupal files in. Yeah? Oh, yeah, I have no idea. I know the IT guy was in here messing with it, but I do not know. All right, so now what will happen when I go back to our little site here. Is it's going to automatically send me to the install screen. And we have a couple options now with Drupal 7. We can do a minimal install or a standard install. Probably want to do a standard install. Um, on the Drupal.org site, they have these things called installation profiles. That if you know you have a specific need, there may be um, there may be a, a profile in here that meets that need. These are actually fairly new to Drupal.org, so they're not there isn't a huge uh, there isn't a huge selection yet. They will improve. They will get better. You know, sooner or later, you're going to start think, seeing things on there like simple blogging profile, and then Drupal will be as easy to set up as WordPress. But um, you know, there there are some on there, but generally speaking, they're they're not that uh, extensive yet. So we're just going to go with the standard install. Except I forgot one minor thing is that. Um, so we've got our, our site downloaded, we've got it in. One of the things we're going to need to do generally first before we can actually set up the install is set up our database. So even if we've got our database server set up, we actually have to create a new database for this site. So even if you're on a hosting account, generally there's going to be some sort of menu option for databases and it's going to give you an option to say create new database. So I'm going to do that in the back end real quick. Um, a lot of hosting accounts will use a similar system that I'm using right here. It's just a, a website that actually allows you to manage the database. It's called PHP My Admin, and like GoDaddy uses this. Most most websites or web hosting services use this same uh, software here. So when you set up a new database, generally you have to set up a database and a user. Just call our database DCLA. Normally you want to use a, a hard to guess password for your database. It is the sort of skeleton that holds up your uh, Drupal site. You know, that's where all of your configurations, all of your content is stored in your database. So if you use a weak database password, you do run the risk of somebody hacking your database and losing your site. So make sure you use, when you're setting up your database and your user, um, some services will actually just auto-generate a strong password for you, but don't go in and type one, two, three, four if it asks you for a password to create one. Create a strong password. 
So I'm going to create the database here and all right. So now we can go back to installing Drupal. There is, uh, with Drupal, it, it comes default in English, but if for some reason you wanted to install it in other languages, that is an option. And you can click on that link and read more if, if that is something you're interested in. Yes? Um, that is something that Drupal handles, um, and it's one of the, the it handles it better than probably any software system out there, but it, it's not a, a beginner level thing. Like you, you will need help from someone who has experience with Drupal and experience setting that up because there is a lot that goes into it. Um, but it does handle that and it does handle the ability. Uh, what it doesn't do though is it doesn't like automatically translate your content. So if you know you're setting up a site in English and Spanish, you still have to create that content in both languages on your own. What Drupal does is it'll actually, it'll just automatically try and translate any uh, language that's written into the code. But any user created content, you're going to have to actually, you know, write it in both languages if you do that. All right. Yeah. So all we do on this screen is we just put in that database that we just created and then our username and password for that database that we just created. And the one I did, I kept them all the same for ease of use. We're going to save it and continue. And then it, right here, it just runs through all the different things that it's going to do. And it generally takes a, about a minute or so. It depends a lot on um, what your needs are. If you're just needing a, a you know a more basic website, then yeah, Drupal Seven is ready to go for that. If there's really specific business logic that you need, you may still be able to do Drupal Seven, um, but a lot of the the module functionality has not been ported from six up to seven yet. So you know if there's like a specific module that you need, you know it's it's really going to depend on whether that module is available as to whether or not you can use six or seven. Um, but for the most part, if you know you're just getting into it, start with the latest version because you know that's what everyone's going to be moving their sites to. That's what everyone's going to be moving to over the next year. So there's no, there's not a real point in getting started in six and then in a few months realizing, well, now I have to relearn a lot of stuff for seven. Um, you know, if you're starting, start with the latest version. Yeah. On, on that particular point, um, we, we, we came across that moving to Drupal. Uh, I installed Drupal 7 first, but had exactly that issue with the module. Yeah. Um, where do you see the community in importing to version 7 or 8 in the coming months? Well, 8's just so we, yeah. I mean, 8's still years off, but. Um, you know, there there was a big push before Drupal 7 came out for the, for you know people who maintain modules on Drupal.org to have their modules ready to go. It doesn't always happen. Uh, you know, like I said, I maintain you know I maintain numerous modules on Drupal.org. I don't have the time to go through for the 12 modules I have and update all of them to Drupal 7 right now. So I'm doing it in phases, and, and um, you know, as I create new modules, I'm creating them for Drupal 7, and then thinking about backporting to six. So it really just depends on the module. Um, you know, a lot of module maintainers, though, you'd be surprised if it's a module you really want on seven and you're committed that you're going to use Drupal seven, you know, if you're working for a company that's willing to kick them a few hundred bucks, that motivates a lot of, that'll, that'll you know, get a module maintainer to, to upgrade it to seven. Um, you know, because for a lot of us that are module maintainers, you know, we work a full-time job as doing Drupal, but, you know, most of the work we put into our modules is done on the side in our own time. So, you know, giving back to the community in that way is, is, a, is a big way to be helpful, too. All right, so now it's, it's run through. It's set all the database up. So now we're just going to put some basic stuff, um, our site name. So we're going to call this Drupal Camp LA site. 
and And you can see it's actually got some stuff built into it, like, hey, your password's weak, fix it, your password's match. It'll give you some suggestions to make it a tougher password. And then a lot of this stuff down here, you don't even really need to mess with. It's going to automatically detect your time zone. Um, for the most part, you don't even really need to touch this. You just need to put in your username, password, and your, your site settings up here. And now we have a Drupal 7 site. So it did take more than five minutes, but we'll, we'll chalk that up to the questions. Um, so you can see this is Drupal 7. If you've not used Drupal before, as I know some of you haven't, um, you know, we'll go through it a little bit. Um, let's point out some of the different uh, functionality here is, you know, this is would be an example of the menus that I mentioned. You know, as we add extra things to this menu, they'll go out here as tabs. This would be a block. These would be blocks over here in our sidebar. When we add content down here, that's a node, um, and that'll be the content. And then, you know, we're logged in as admin, so that's our user. Um, Drupal 7 is really a, a huge improvement in the user interface. It really makes it easier to manage your site uh, from Drupal 6 because Drupal 7 comes out of the box with this nifty little administration toolbar and it comes out of the box with uh, in-page editing. So, you know, we no longer have to keep going to all these different pages just to edit our content. We can just create it real quick. So we're going to create our first page. Now, one thing that Drupal does not come with out of the box is a rich text editor. Um, if you've used something like WordPress, you know, when you install that, you have a nice little sort of Microsoft Word looking box to type all your content in. Unfortunately, Drupal still does not come out of the box with that, so that's something you would have to add as a module um, off of Drupal.org. Is there one um, Well, there is an actual API called WYSIWYG. What you see is what you get. Um, that will allow you to basically choose from any of like 10 different WYSIWYG editors. Probably one of the most popular ones is CK Editor or Tiny MCE, which is what WordPress uses. Um, so those, those are the most two popular ones. They're open source, so they're pretty well supported. So we're going to actually, we're going to give this thing a menu link and you'll see it show up in the main menu. And then down, you know, down below when you're creating content, you've got some different options. Um, you know, we can add a menu link where we can put it in a menu. Revisions, Drupal actually comes out of the box. One of the great features about it is it has something called revisions. Um, it basically allows you to keep track of changes to your content as you make them. Um, if you tell it to create a new vision, new revision, then it'll actually save your old content and your new content, and then you can go back later and say, oh, whoops, I didn't mean to make that change. What did it look like before? Oh, yeah, it looked better before. Let me revert it back to that earlier version. Um, so it allows you to have a little bit more control over, uh, you know, those, those inevitable mess-ups that happen when you're sitting there building your site and you spent three hours doing something and you realize, I changed something and I don't have what it looked like before, and I wanted to go back to that. Well, if you're using the Drupal versioning system, it really makes that easy to do. So that's definitely something uh, you should use, especially when you're first starting. And then, you know, especially if you're using it as a platform for something where you're going to have multiple people uh, editing content, you know, that gives you the control to be able to, to change something back if someone made a change you don't like and you don't want. Uh, URL aliases, that's basically uh, what you can give it a custom uh, path. So, you know, if you want this first page, 
uh, instead of saying node slash one after your website address, you want it to say slash about or slash um, contact or slash uh, hello, whatever. You can actually set that uh, in here. And there's a lot of really great modules that will actually uh, customize that and sort of do that automatically. And you can set up uh, automatic uh, URL aliases that will generate it based off the title of the page or the author or the date. So you can have a lot of custom uh, customization in that form fashion. Comments are turned on. Uh, the, the comment module is turned on, but on pages, by default, it's closed. If we wanted to open up commenting, like I said, that's built into the system, so you can turn commenting on and off on any piece of content that you create. Authoring is just who it's authored by, our username, and we could actually change the date if we wanted to, but uh, there's not a lot of need for that. And then publishing, you have the option of uh, you know, I can uncheck that and then it would just sort of save this as a draft, but it wouldn't be visible to end users. So there's a lot of options available. Uh, I really suggest, you know, once you kind of get something set up, just play with them. There's documentation available on Drupal.org um, that will explain a lot of it. Ask questions, get on Twitter, get on the IRC. Um, but there's a, lot of, uh, there's a lot of options available in Drupal. And that's one of the things that has been kind of scary for people uh, when they get into Drupal is that they go in and they just see all these different options up here and then they start clicking on them and there's five different links under each one of these things and what do I do and how do I do it. Um, so we've really tried to make it easier in Drupal 7 by making these more apparent what these do. So you know content shows us what we've created and we can add content. Structure gives us the ability to manage our menus, our blocks, uh, taxonomy, which is like tagging, content types. You know, appearance allows us to manage our themes. You know, so these are some of the, the default themes that come with it. Yeah. Yeah, let's let's talk about content types real quick. Uh, that this is a key key principle in Drupal is the, the concept of content types. As I mentioned, nodes are the actual content of your website. What you have within nodes are basically sort of a subclass of you can have different types of nodes. Um, because let's be honest, not every piece of content on a website is the same. If you're running an e-commerce site that also has a blog, you're going to have different pieces of content. You're going to have just pages where you have an about us page and our history page or something. You're going to have blog posts. You're going to have products. Maybe you're going to have uh, you know web forms where people can contact you or fill out a survey. So there's all these different content types. And what content types are basically when we click on add content, they basically provide us different ways to categorize um, our content, our nodes. Each of these is a node, would be a node when we create it, but it's, a, it's sort of a subclass of nodes. So we have article nodes, we have basic page nodes. You know, if I added extra modules, like I said, you know, we could have a product node, we could have uh, a web form node. But what the, the content over here in structure, what the content type allows us to do is we can actually just add some stuff on the fly. Um, you know, so if we wanted to create a product node, a product node type, we could do that here. Um, now, I would definitely suggest if, if uh, you know, if you're not really familiar with this, um, I believe later today, I think right after lunch, I'm doing a session uh, called um, Flexible Site Building with Fields and Views. And we're really going to kind of go over content types and how to get data into your site and then how to pull it out and display it in really flexible ways. So if you're not familiar with, with Drupal and, and fields and views and content types and what all that means, definitely come check out that session later today. So th this is our, our Drupal site, you know, like you can see here, you know, we've added, we've added our page up here, we've got our page here, um, and that's it. Is there 
Any other questions? Start right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a there's an actual uh, an, there's another another module called admin menu that provides some of that functionality. Um, it, it's actually it was a probably one of the most popular modules in D6 in Drupal 6, and they sort of took some of that functionality and built it into just the base system in Drupal 7. Um, but it is available for Drupal 7, and it actually provides more of like a drop down feature, so you're not you're not clicking here. And then click in here, and then click in there. It, it provides a drop-down tree menu, um, but that is an additional module that you would that you would go download from Drupal.org and install. Admin menu. Then you had a question. Yes, uh, I noticed that you created a, a first page mm -hmm. with line two in the browser. Is there a way to Yeah, uh, that login box would be something, it would be a block. So we could go in to our block system, and you can see the, you know, the sidebars over here. So we can just either drag it, you know, we can drag it out all the way down to disabled, or we could actually just use these little menus and go uh, disabled, and it'll move it. Um, so, like I said, blocks are sort of little pieces of code that, you know, provide widgets and lists and login boxes and search boxes that you can move around to the content in your website. Um, and when you're looking at this page, if you wanted to see, like, you know, it's got this big list of regions right here, header and help and highlighted and feature and content. And that probably doesn't help you if you're looking at this list because you're like, where is all that? So you can actually click, click this little link right here, demonstrate regions. And it'll actually show you where each of those regions are. Um, go ahead. So this is sort of what it would look like to a regular visitor. Um, one of the things we could do if we wanted, if uh, by default on Drupal site, uh, the home page is sort of like a blog listing page. So any articles you add would show up in a uh, you know cascading list on the home page. Um, or we could actually go back and change our configuration settings to show that first page we created as the home page. You know, we could change this to So this is what it would look like to, you know, someone who's not logged in. Um, under the, uh, you know, if you want to change your site configuration or what your default home page is, that's just under the configuration and then site information. By default, uh, out of the box, Drupal installs the home page as basically just a list of the article types. Of if Every time you create an article, it'll automatically be published to the home page. It's sort of like a blog would happen. Um, so a lot of people get a little confused with that when they first, <coughs> when they're first using Drupal, they're like, why isn't my page showing up? Um, well, that's because, like I said, articles show up on the home page initially. Pages just show up as pages. So if you want to change that, that's just something you have to you have to go into those uh, site configurations, and you know you can change your site name, your slogan, and then down at the bottom there's a thing where you can change your home page, your front page. That'll depend on how you have your site set up. If you don't change it from the default settings, 
if you were to click the pub or promote to front page, it'll push a little uh, sort of teaser snippet of whatever you just created to that home page in the list sorted by newest to oldest. Um, if you change this default setting right there, then it's going to show that page regardless. And so, you know, there's a lot of more advanced, really advanced things that you can do uh, with some of the, the contributed modules where you could start adding like slideshows and have multiple different widgets and all sorts of stuff. Um, but that is a, a much more sort of advanced topic. Like within the content itself? Um, well, that would require that. That's going to require a little bit of actual HTML knowledge. Um, let's go here and edit this. Um, without the just sort of with the default installation without a WYSIWYG, you actually see that you have the ability to add what are called A tags. Um, so if you don't, if you know HTML, then um, you obviously know what those are, but uh, in HTML, an A tag is a way to link to another page. So if you're going to link to another page, then you know you're going to always want to use um, everything after the .com, basically, or the .net, whatever your your extension is, the slash plus whatever that web address is um, to actually link to that the page that you're linking to. So if you know our page was slash about. We're going to want to make. We're going to want to use that as the address that we link to in the content. Uh, did you say including the slash? Including the slash. Uh, what happens a lot of times if you don't include the slash? If you're on a page that's like slash about us slash history, if you don't include the the entire slash thing, then it, it just doesn't link right because the way web browsers work. Um, you can think of those slashes just like it, you would you would uh, with a normal file structure on a computer. You know, each slash is sort of like a subfolder. So if you don't actually add the different slashes, then it's it, the computer doesn't know how to find that. Yes. What are the different text format options on the The different text format options, by default, uh, we could do filtered HTML, which will it tells us it runs it through these different filters here. Um, full HTML, which will let you actually use any HTML tags. Um, that's generally not something you want to give untrusted users because they could do things like add JavaScript or things that could potentially make your site a danger to users. And then plain text, which actually strips out, it'll, it'll strip out any HTML tags and won't display them. Um, so if that was something you wanted to give people in comment, you know, when they're commenting or creating content, um, you can limit them to only using plain text, and that way they can't add pictures or links to spam sites or stuff like that. Um, and then these are, you know, text formats are configurable. You can go in the configurations and, and alter them and stuff. Can you add like a, like PHP script there? there is a format for PHP. Um, once again, that's like a trusted admin thing. A, a lot of times you want to try and, you know, if you're doing just some basic stuff with PHP in the content, it's generally okay, but you want to try and avoid PHP in uh, the database. That's just kind of a it looked on. It's kind of looked down upon in, in to, to have your PHP script running through eval. It slows your site down, but you know it is possible to do that. Um, there are other ways to do it where you can actually have pages show up within Drupal, but that's a you know, from from code files in Drupal, but that's a definitely a much more advanced topic. But yeah, there are some modules that will recognize that um, and, and be able to help you with that. I don't remember it off the top of my head. I believe it's called like node filter or something. Um, but there are some modules that will help with that. A lot of times though, that's just, uh, you know, that's one of the downsides of using, if you're using a, a site with a lot of content, 
that can be a real pain if the, the URL changes. Um, but a lot of times, you know, if you just change the page title, that doesn't necessarily mean the URL changes. Um, it may, depending on, once again, your configuration, uh, but it may not either. So it, just because you change your page title doesn't necessarily mean that's going to happen. And one of the things that Drupal does by default is what you see up here where it says first page. This is actually considered like an alias. Um, there's a system address for every piece of content that you create. Uh, it's just node slash whatever the node number is, you know, whatever piece of content. So this, this one, since this is the first thing we created, is actually node slash one. And that's a system address that no matter what you do will never change for that piece of content. Um, but generally that's not pretty and, you know, you don't want people going to your site and seeing node slash one. You want them to see slash about us. Um, so those aliases just provide a pretty way to display that. So we're pretty much uh, out of time right now. Um, any other final questions? So I think that the gentleman going back to the six tickets and logins are not available. So what am I using out now? Is it a quality behind a log or is it just... No, I mean, you know, like I said, the company I actually work for full time, we're, we're still pretty much exclusively on D6. Um, it's, it's really highly supported. All the modules out there work for D6. Um, so you're not, you're not really falling behind. Most, most sites are still being built on, on Drupal 6. It's just, you know, if you can do it in Drupal 7, you know, make that effort. Um, it's going to make, it, it's just going to make sure that your site's supported for that much longer. Whereas if you develop it in Drupal 6, it'll be good for, uh, you know, it'll be supported within the Drupal community for at least the next two years until uh, Drupal 8 comes out. But it's just more and more people will stop fixing their modules for Drupal 6. And as new features come out and people come up with the next great module idea, you know, they're, they're probably not going to develop it for Drupal 6. Yeah? Can you recall the runtime that lapsed when 5 came out to 6 to become what it is today? When 5 came out, from 5 to 6 was actually a shorter period of time, probably about a year and a half than it was from six to seven, but five to six didn't have a lot of big changes. It was really some minor tweaks to the sort of code and the performance. Six or uh, six to seven was huge changes. There was a lot of changes, a lot of new features, a lot of stuff added, and then seven to eight is going to be pretty big, some pretty big changes too, just in what we're talking about with how we're going to do things. So. You know, five to six was like a year and a half or so. Six to seven was two plus years. Seven to eight is probably going to be at least two plus years. So, anyways, before we go, I want to find out who in here has a Drupal.org user account. Okay. Who in here has signed up for that user account in the last month? How about in the last two weeks? In the last week. Last night, can anybody beat last night? <laughs> last night, all right. You win a Starbucks gift card. All right, so that is our session. I will be around all day if you have more questions. I have another session in the next five minutes to get to. But uh, like I said, come to my, my fields and views session if, if you really want to learn about you know, the really Swiss Army knife tool for, for building awesome sites with Drupal, all right? You guys have a good day.